God bless you. Welcome. It's great to be with you today. We're going to get back into Ephesians. I'd like to finish this before next year. But um, we're going to get into Ephesians 4 a little bit regarding the gift ministries and endeavor to grow in our understanding to a greater degree tonight. Kelly, can you please pray? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word and for the privilege it is to know it and grow in it and be your kids father thank you so much for all that you've made available to us and 
just for your wonderful grace and love and mercy in our lives. Thank you for that unspeakable gift of Holy Spirit, Father, just how set up for success we are because we have that spiritual connection with you. Thank you also for the gift ministries in the church and how you designed them to function, Father, for the perfecting of your people. So thank you, God, for all of our ministers, Father, who love your people and endeavor to raise them up in your word. Thank you for my husband as he teaches the word tonight, Father, and just for how wonderful he is and for blessing him back for his efforts. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. You can take your Bibles, please, and turn to Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> Some of the categories that we have been studying in um, on our Monday night Bible study as well as on our Thursday night is really going to affect this teaching tonight. It's It goes hand in hand. And that is understanding our identity in Christ first and foremost, our liberty in Christ, our authority of dominion, and something that we have not gotten into yet is our spiritual authority or our victory in Christ. So there's five categories that when we get into this, we will see how all this fits together within the framework of the manifestation of the gift of Holy Spirit and how all nine operations have a huge purpose in the functioning of the gift ministries as well as each person in the body of Christ and the mutual believing of every one of us coming together. It's vitally important that we have this in our understanding first and foremost, that if we don't ask, the answer is definitely always going to be no. And with the gift ministries, it's about having an understanding of it's not just one person's faith that makes a difference. It is the mutual faith of the body of Christ coming together in an area. We have friends all over the country and the world, and there's gift ministries within those Bible studies, fellowships, churches, what have you. And it's un the understanding is that we have to come together with that mutual faith. Now, faith is more about our trust in God than my own ability to believe for something. It's more about my trusting that God's word is yea and amen and that he will bring it to pass as I trust him and his word. It is a belief with the highest notion of trust in God, according to Thayer's Greek lexicon. So let's look at this a little bit here in Ephesians. We're probably going to have to do this in two parts just because there's so much within these few verses. But let's pick it up here. We're going to look at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. The punctuation marks were never in the original, so we can pretty much guarantee that you know we need to read through some of that because they're probably not in the right location as you find in many different places. Back up in verse 8 it says, Wherefore he saith when he ascended up, up, up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. <clears throat> so we're talking about here the gift ministries to the body of Christ. And here's the purpose. It's for the perfecting of the saints, the mending or the perfecting of the saints. It's for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 
and there's an end point till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And it goes on, for this further purpose that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So there's a lot here in these verses and going backwards from verse 14, something that was that we talked about on Monday is how strong meat belongs to them that are of full spiritual maturity so that they're able to discern both good and evil. And this comes into play because this is talking about growing in our spiritual maturity so as to not be tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Not as children. But we've got to continue to rise up in our understanding and in our, our faith to the point that there's no doubt, worry, or fear. When we got into our authority of dominion, the big key item was the introduction of fear with Adam and Eve. And it was that fear that spread throughout, and we see it in the book of Job when he declares, the thing I feared most has come upon me. It's that fear that's the snare, the trap, that ensnares our faith from the realities of God's word. Fear is a choice. It's a decision to believe in something that is not real. What's the, what is it, an acronym for it? Fear being false evidence of appearing real. Well, it's definitely something that's not of God anytime there's fear, and it negates his promises. So it basically throws faith out the window. <coughs> we'll get into what these gifts mean, what the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers, what their function is at a later time. But I want to talk about our responsibility in the body of Christ as far as growing in our understanding here a little bit. If we just stay where we're at, in our understanding and take the teachers and the pastors word for everything we are going to be in a predicament that they were in in Martin Luther's day and that's not a good situation to be in and man I'll tell you to bring up continually the religion, the religious <clears throat> um, experiences that are out there today that are drawing people in by the thousands that do not lead people back to Christ is very concerning. So therefore, where do we stand on this? Are we as the word says, ambassadors for Christ? Are we out there standing up for what is right for the truth? <clears throat> I was looking for a little pendant for my daughter for something that she needs. And I came across these two keys that have the word truth stamped on them. I, I thought about buying them just because We've got to have the keys of truth, and that's God's word. And look, we've all got to be in it. We all have to know what it says. We've got to stop taking for granted that somebody else is teaching, and we've got to get in the word and prove whether those things are so. 
The perfecting of the saints. Let's turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. The mending, the perfecting, it, it, it's so important because there's so much human frailty in the world today. And the majority of the Christians do not even comprehend the truth regarding what God made available in Christ. Healing, restoration, physically, mentally, spiritually, the condemnation that weighs on people is immense. And this is where we come in as we speak the truth in love. It takes a mature man to rise above their own inadequacies and put get out of themselves to see past their face and rise up to restore someone that has blown it for lack of a better word maybe that doesn't i mean we know all sins been redeemed we understand that but maybe that they're having a tough time and they just keep screwing up and upsetting things in this course that they're on for lack of a better term you know it doesn't matter what it is maybe they're having a, a struggle with alcohol maybe they're you know with everything going on in the world we've got to consider where people are there's so much coming at us so fast our kids are being faced with this transgender movement the lgb whatever t movement that's out there and i'm not you know, I'm, we got to love people according to God's word, not according to what the world says, because there's a complete difference. You know, it's not this coexist thing that you see. It's loving according to the word of God, which is a decision to act and perform God's word. It has nothing to do with the emotional side that people are looking for. So that's irritating when they try to push just love. No, it's love according to God's word. And our kids are facing this more and more, and they're being pressured by this. Really, it's backwards. It, this should not be, and I'm not giving anybody a hard time. I'm giving our adversary, the devil, a hard time for what he has performed. He has deceived the nations. He is deceiving the nations. Socialism is another one. And I'm not talking politics. I'm talking the reality that we will be forced or the endeavor is for us to be forced to do something that is not godly. Taking away our First Amendment right, which is our religious belief, that's what they're after. So we've got to stay sharp. We've got to come together in the unity of the faith, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That's our goal. That's, you know, we've already have this thing. And maybe we should look at that more, what it is. But we already have it. We are exhorted to endeavor to keep it. That requires that we're actively engaged in everything that we're doing. We can't just coast through this thing because things are getting serious by the day, by the minute. So, brethren, Galatians 6, 1. If a man be overtaken in a fault. Now, I want to just stop myself because we have to understand that the framework of this is set up talking about those that believe God's word. It's not talking about those who do not. This is talking about people that believe it. Whether they do a great job one day or not, we're talking about people that believe it, that want to do something with it. And maybe they struggle to do something with it, but they're still there. They're still trying. They're still walking to the best of their ability. You can't criticize that. 
You can't, you, we can't comprehend because we're not walking in their shoes. So we've got to be really careful and understand that we must walk in love as dear children, according to Ephesians 5. That is our goal, at, according to Ephesians, as we imitate our Heavenly Father, is to walk in love. So here we are. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual. That's right. Those that are of full spiritual maturity that discern truth from error, good and evil. Rise up. We've got to rise up in our thinking for the purpose of restoring such an one in the spirit of meekness. This meekness is we've got to stay meek and humble and coachable to from you know the word. It's the word. Considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. You know, the ego and the pride can get involved when working with people if we allow it to. And we can be overtaken in our in this thing as well. And it takes a very mature mind to not to not allow oneself to get caught up in the politics, in the hearsay, in the gossip, to bear one another's burdens. To take that on and to keep confidences and not share it with one another, to, with other people, but to keep those confidences and really protect that person that needs to be restored. You know, we've got to bring them in closer to us. If somebody is hurting and somebody has tripped themselves up or allowed the adversary to trip them up, then we've got to bring them in with the mindset that all sin has been redeemed. They're not a sinner, but maybe they're having a tough time. Condemnation is just a unruly evil that breaks people down. So we've got to restore them. We bear their burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Go back to Ephesians, please. Ephesians chapter 4. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So there is a goal here that we continue to rise in our level of thinking and in our maturity level. The work of the ministry that all men would know the truth of God's word. To make known Christ in the new birth, that all men would be saved and to come unto an accurate, precise knowledge of this truth. It's about an applied knowledge. It's not about having the head knowledge because that's easy. <clears throat> you can turn on the TV and you can watch these biblical scholars that have a head knowledge and that's all they have. They don't have a spiritual understanding of the reality of of what Christ made available. <clears throat> and I'm kind of talking about like the History Channel stuff. It's great history. And I'm not criticizing anybody, folks. I'm just talking about we've got to get to the rightly divided, rightly applied Word of God so that we can overcome spiritually, so that we can see our spiritual victory come to pass. Where am I at? Yeah, I know. So it's a really about endeavoring to help people grow. That it's oxano growth to grow without any kind of force or outside. It's just a natural growth, a natural progression. And 
either people are going to want the word or they're not. And we've got to remember that it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's an alcoholic, if it's a homosexual, if it's a thief, it's something that we as mature believers spiritually are to help. We are to get in there in love with the love of God. And, well, we know that the love of God is the keeping of His commandments. So, you know, when we, we walk in love, then where is sin if it's the keeping of God's commandments? Well, it's gone. When we walk in love, it's impossible for us to sin. And that's a whole other story. Because sin lives in the law. You know, that's part of what the accomplishments of Jesus Christ really show us is that great detail. And perhaps we'll get into that again and revisit some of these things. Our liberty in Christ and our identity in Christ. It's very easy to cut a tree down. But it takes years and years for it to grow by nourishment and the right atmosphere is the word I'm looking for. It takes a second to cut it down. I just cut this massive tree. Well, maybe not a second. Cut this massive paper tree down in my backyard. And it didn't take very long, as big as it was. But this thing's probably been growing for over 40 years. Probably this house was built in 62, so there you go. Doesn't take that long to cut it down, but to, in, to promote growth and edification, it sometimes takes a little bit of effort and time and care. So we've got to look at that. It's not something that we can just have this expectation that somebody should be somewhere where they're not spiritually. Well, I guess that's where I want to leave off for tonight. Let's just keep growing in the Word. Let's just keep endeavoring to keep what we have been given by God the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, and grow in our faith, our mutual faith one to, of one another. Look, I'm going to leave you with this. If you want to see signs, miracles, and wonders come to pass in this day and age, then we must be like-minded on what the Word says to be true, that it is true, that such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, that we can heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease according to the word, casting out devil spirits, healing the sick, raising the dead. If we're not like-minded on that, we're not going to see this thing come to pass. On the flip side of that, there's lying signs, miracles, and wonders that are doing it. So why shouldn't we as God's children be doing this? Because our authority spiritually has been given and set by Jesus Christ. Well, we'll pick it up again. So sure love you. Thank you, Father, for the greatness of your word and for the power that is latent within us and that we can endeavor to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace and that our mutual faith Together, we'll bring to pass signs, miracles, and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Sure love you. See you next Thursday. God bless.